Here on the Thai border, it wasn't unusual in the past to see ethnic Karen fleeing from army attacks in Myanmar. But times and technology have changed dramatically, including ways to get the word out about the 70th anniversary of Karen Revolution Day. At the moment, we communicate with each other through social media like Facebook. We created a Facebook page for communication to contact other youth groups, and sometimes we help contact Karen groups at the office. Despite modernization, traditional goals remain as the Karen people continue to seek autonomy and control over their territory. For experienced veterans, army tactics like reinforcing military posts during ceasefire agreements is nothing new. The ceasefire is part of a good thing, but in Brigade 5, the Burmese army are restricted from entering the area, so they try to instigate a conflict. They try to find a way to start a conflict in many different ways and blame the KNU side for breaking the ceasefire when actually they are the guilty party. Despite government denials of the violations, the Karin splinter groups have called for reunification in defense against Myanmar troops. Sideline meetings at the anniversary event also attracted peace delegates and politicians, including former political prisoner Koko G. Federalism, the Federal Union, is the political objective. For that reason, we're trying to solve the problems politically. So by doing so, so we can reduce the arms conflict in our country and to get the political aims for the ethnic people. As the Korean people wrap up another year of unrest and indecision, most are just waiting for the fighting to end and the permanent rebuilding to begin. Steve Sanford for VOA News in Corinne State, Myanmar.